So my name's James Reinders. I am uh, uh, supposedly retired from Intel, but the folks at Intel gave me a call um, earlier this year and said, uh, would you like to kind of sneak out of retirement and help us with a book uh, as a contractor? And I, I said, probably not. They said, oh, come on, it's really cool. And uh, as I got to look at Data Parallel C++, it's like, oh, yes. Um, I have a personal belief that it, it's um, getting to the time to put kernel-based programming into the C++ language. Now, that's, that's a mouthful, and that's like a 10 or 20-year project. But this is a great start at it. So I was very intrigued by it. I've been having a lot of fun working with the development team. Um, I think you've heard a lot about DPC++ and Sickle. Um, I'm going to try to fill in a few gaps and encourage you to try it out. One of the things we've been working on, as I said, is a book. Um, and I only got the uh, PDF for the book put together last uh, Thursday. It's, only the, it's the first four chapters, excellent introduction. I'd really love feedback. Um, so I met one of the Intel folks who, um, from marketing, had these USB drives that look like clouds. Um, and we, we sat in P.F. Chang's and uh, I, uh, I proved that I'm a programmer and he's a marketing guy because I wrote a script to relabel the drives and load them and as fast as I could plug them in, I think I programmed 220 of these and he did 30 in the same amount of time. Um, I could say it's because I had a Mac machine and he had a Windows. Anyway, so we're going to pass these around, take one or two of them. Um, you can, I'll show you where you can download the book and so forth, but the book's on here along with the examples, um, and at least you get a, a, a really cool drive that looks like a cloud. Um, and I'm going to keep this up here. I, I put together my own little website at tinyurl.com slash data parallel. Actually, it's, I think it's data parallel without the dash. Both are supposed to work, but I think that that causes an interaction, so it's, it's maybe data parallel without it. Um, and I've just got links on there, including a link to the errata for the book already. A few people have read it. Fortunately, kind of minor errors, but I want to know everything. So um, that's got a lot of resources on it. It's got a pointer to where to get the open source, where to get the book, where to see the training videos. Just kind of a one-stop shop instead of burying you in URLs. Um, so the, um, the book has four chapters in it. One's an introduction. And some people think I don't punch up Sickle enough in the introduction and say how wonderful it is. And others say I mark it a little too much. So you'll have to give me feedback. Um, I am enthusiastic about the idea of adding kernel-based programming. It's a great way to get data parallelism. Um, I worked a lot on the TBB project, which is very task parallelism oriented, which is an excellent complement. But the two concepts, they're tools in your toolkit. You know, I love doing woodworking. and. I have a lot of tools. I have saws and chisels and, and wrenches and whatnot in my toolkit. I don't get upset that my hammer doesn't work on everything. I, I like to have a toolkit. I'm the same way as a software developer. So I've got tools for data parallelism, tools for task parallelism. I think the data parallelism tools have been a little weak, um, at least the open ones, and so I'm excited. So the introduction kind of conveys that. But then we get into the meaty chapters. Um, you know, where do, how do you make code execute somewhere? Uh, how do you do data management? You've heard some stuff about adding USM instead of just the buffers of Sickle. Uh, where code executes is pure Sickle. It's very OpenCL-like in terms of querying devices, finding the device you want to use, and so forth. And then how to express parallelism. This is how do you write a kernel. So it's an excellent introduction to data parallelism. I really encourage you to, to get the book. Um, I've also done a little series of training. You'll find that at the tiny URL data parallel as well. Um, I've done a little training series that's a complement to the book. Um, you get the benefit of, of some interaction. Um, so DPC++, as you may have heard, implements data parallelism for heterogeneous systems. And to me, that, that the big questions as a programmer is how do I control where things run and how do I write something that runs there? Uh, this is my, and like I said, I think the dash works, but if it doesn't, get rid of it. But I've got, and I added errata the other day. Um, forget these, these are all the URLs it points to. It's just a really simple website to make it easy to find stuff. What is data parallelism? Probably a concept most of you know, but I, I, I hate to skip it. It's um, massive amounts of data uh, computations you can do in parallel. This is a vector add, which is awfully simple. You'll imagine much more complicated things to do, but uh, the, the more things you can do in parallel, uh, the better. Um, and 
the world's heterogeneous, and I think that's a key message Intel's carrying with the one API and with DPC++, which is let's go get a set of consistent tools and capabilities there um, and really let all the hardware shine. I, I, I kind of am amused by the phrase, don't leave any transistor behind. Um, I tend to think of it as let all the light shine. Um, anything that really emphasizes, hey, I've got this one piece of hardware, it's going to solve all your problems, worries me as a programmer. As a programmer, I'd rather be able to address all of them, and I'm, it makes me excited about DPC++. Um, so it can handle different architectures. I think you've seen it emphasize what is DPC++. To me, I like the name because it has C++ in the name. Um, and Sickle's a name that's new to a lot of people. Um, Sickle's very important. Um, it implements all of Sickle. That's really how it gets its data parallelism and some additional features that hopefully a lot of them will make it back into Sickle or maybe all of them. Um, and it sits on top of Clang and LLVM, so it's, it's open source. In fact, I'll tell you, working on the book, I've been working on the book for the last, I don't know, four or five months or six months, I, I, good grief, was it April, whatever time. Um, occasionally, one of the, the, develop, uh, one of the peop other people working on the book would check in some code and I would go run it and it didn't work. And he'd say, he'd say, oh, it hasn't made it into the, the beta, the alpha release. And I'd say, well, well, how do I check it? And he says, just build it from open source. And so uh, I, I found myself building the compiler from open source repeatedly um, because they were putting all the changes in the open source version first and eventually it propagated into the product. And um, that's the way the development team's working in my experience. So the open source is, a, is you can go see everything that they're doing, it's great. Um, Sickle is a, a standard. You can download the, the 1.2.1 R5 was current last week when we released the book, but now it's R6. Um, we knew it was really close, and, uh, but I wouldn't put R6 in the book until R6 existed. The book beat it by a day, I think, uh, the current version, but it doesn't change that much. But 1.2.1 uh, spec is really oriented towards um, telling you all the ins and outs of the language uh, from a, a specification standpoint, and I hope the book brings to life how do you use this. Um, it should be complementary. Now, there's lots of types of parallelism out there, pipelines and SIMD and multi-threading, multi-core, uh, combinations of these, and uh, um, all of these, as long as they're single node, are in the purview of what we can hope that DPC++ can give us access to um, taking advantage of, and that's really why you want to write in an abstract language is so it can map onto these, because pipelining may be a concept that's very uh, um, rampant in an FPGA implementation, but you may, on multi-core, multi-threading, may be a concept more likely you take advantage of on a CPU. In reality, you tend to take advantage of all of these to some degree on all the devices. It just varies. It's modern C++, it feels like modern C++. If you're used to CUDA or OpenCL, it'll feel very familiar as well in terms of its kernel concept. Um, and so it's, it's, a, um, it's an effort to standardize this, lock it down, and really tie it into C++. I mean, it is really tied into C++. So if you're um, an in and out C++ programmer, I think you'll love it. I'm more of a C programmer that knows C++, which is a little shocking given that I've worked with TBB so long, but I, I know people who, who live and breathe C++. I'm not one of those people. I like C++ a lot. I can use it quite well, and I think this works really well with C++. Um, now, there's four concepts that we talk about when we're teaching DPC++ to know. Um, there's a platform model. And um, in my training, it, you can go download the training, you can watch the training videos or just download the slides and the code. Um, I, the platform model, uh, to me, I brought it alive by just writing a stu stupid little program. I called it Curious, and then I wrote one that's called Very Curious. And I just query the, uh, the uh, Sickle uh, thing. What devices are on my platform and, and uh, what are their features and dump them out? Uh, it was very entertaining because I've run it on my Mac and different machines in my house. And, uh, uh, and it gives me all sorts of information about uh, what different Sickle devices I might be able to use for my program. Um, that's a matter of, an, of being able to, under your program control, enumerate what's on the system and decide what to use. 
it's fully in the control of us as programmers. Um, you can leave things to be automatic and default and so forth, but most of us are eventually going to write our programs to query, give nice error messages if it's run in an environment we didn't intend and so forth. Execution model, uh, how do you control where it runs? Uh, you, you've basically got command queues that you submit to and then you can check on the status of whether the kernel is finished, uh, how do you do a kernel. And then the memory model, it's a, um, uh, you've, you have control over the data movement and the um, coherency of that data. Um, so you can, you, you can understand that the data has been copied to a device and that it's not efficient to handle it on the host until the computations are done and copied back. Uh, or you can just naively, you can code pretty uh, blind to that and get your code working, but then you've got full control over it because you really need to, um, to keep that in mind as part of your parallel programming. Not to belabor it too much, but the you know, single source means doesn't mean all your code has to be in one source file, um, but it does mean that your device code and your uh, host code freely mix in source files. But your source code is probably going to be in multiple source files. It's actually going to get exposed to multiple compilers. They're handled by one driver, but you know that underneath there's going to be hidden um, something that knows how to target these different devices. And then there's a generic device, which is an IR, and Intel's using Spear V uh, for their IR. Um, but then they get a fat object code, and that object code may have code very specific to a Gen 9 Intel GPU and very specific to a particular model of a Xeon. Um, but then it can also have a generic IR that could be compiled later just in time. So when it comes time, these fat things follow through the bundle or the linker, um, but when it comes time to execute it, um, it can take a look at what devices are in the machine, um, and if, if there isn't stuff that's been compiled ahead of time, it can be compiled just in time. Now, one notable exception is uh, Intel doesn't supply a just-in-time compiler for an FPGA, which is a good thing. If you've ever actually compiled for an FPGA, uh, you wouldn't want to hit run and then come back a day later for the execution to start. Um, but they do have a FPGA simulator, which runs quite fast. Uh, as, a, as, as what FPGA uh, programmers would know that they would want to use anyways uh, to get the code working. So in any case, uh, that's kind of a quick overview of things. The, what does a SQL program look like or a DPCP++ program? Um, you include a header file, just one. You do a using namespace, um, at least most of us do because we don't like writing SQL, uh, CL SQL in front of everything. Uh, you create a queue, that's your connection to a device. Um, you submit something to the queue, that's how you dump a kernel off to it. And then you have different things, different ways you can express a kernel. Um, and the first three ways are pretty simple. The next way is, is a uh, hierarchical parallelism uh, that uses work groups um, and then dispatches to work items once you've called a work group. Um, and then, um, a couple other things, you usually uh, control the scope of your buffer. This is where my C++ brain doesn't kick in all the time. Um, buffers are ways of sharing data back and forth, and when you destroy a buffer is when it comes back to the host, guaranteed. And um, C++ programmers know this, the destruction of a, of a thing is, is a good event. And in TBB we have um, synchronization primitives, but my C brain sometimes forgets that and I have to remind myself uh, scoping is really important in C++, and it's used quite well in this manner, and it, it helps with the understanding the logic of when your kernel is active and when data is, is, uh, is not uh, necessarily coherent with the uh, uh, host. And you actually usually do a try block around this, and we do not have a chapter in the book yet, we will, on exception handling. You can't process an exception in a kernel, but you can take exceptions because of kernels, and the host has to... Uh, it can reconcile with that, so. All right, well, I think that's, uh, uh, let, me, let me say the book goes into talking about um, how you decompose a problem. Sickle has support for uh, kind of a 3D view. Um, Intel filled in one of the, the Ds with a subgroup, um, but the, uh, this is pretty typical. How do you wrap your brain around how you want to decompose either your problem or your data? They're interrelated. 
you might be thinking of how you're decomposing your problem or decomposing the data. It's, a, it's they're roughly equivalent, but you may think of them one way or the other. Um, and we go into this in the book and the trainings. Oh, I should just show you how quick. Um, if you want to build it from open source, um, there's great instructions. You just need a few basic things on your system like Git and uh, CMake and Python and somebody's C compiler. Um, and I use the Visual Studio on Windows. Uh, I, I, I do all of my work on Linux, but I did do this on Windows and it built quite well. Uh, and then this is, this is the commands, at least for Linux. And the Windows commands are about the same length. You just copy and paste them and boom. You can build, you can build it on any machine. Um, a more complicated discussion is how do you get the devices installed on your machine? And that's one of the reasons I highly recommend uh, looking at uh, DevCloud. And uh, you can log into this. I've been using it a few months. Uh, they just made it public yesterday, uh, so you can sign up for it. You log in. Um, you get a login node. Um, the training talks a little bit. We, they're using uh, PBS. Um, you can submit jobs, or you can actually log in interactively if you figure out how to do that into a node if, if, if it's not too busy. Um, all the tools are installed. There's FPGAs in the cloud. There's um, machines with enhanced amounts of memory to do FPGA compilations. There's machines with uh, uh, gen graphics and, and bump, uh, good Xeons. Um, and so you can just go there and the software is already installed and just use it. I, I actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to promote this, but I actually built the open source compiler on DevCloud 2 and I have a copy of that in my home directory uh, and I play with that as well as the one that Intel installed for me. Very capable machines, highly recommend it uh, if you want to give it a spin. You can go try all these wonderful URLs or you can just uh, go do the tiny URL data parallel, has a link to all of these.